Hello everyone, this is Earth Science teacher Tim Martin, and this is Meteorology Part 15, Mid-Latitude Cyclones. Mid-Latitude Cyclones are also known as Extratropical Cyclones. Sometimes we refer to the Norwegian model, sometimes they're also referred to as Wave Cyclones. Whatever the case, these are common weather systems in middle latitudes. So let's take a look at the United States. Keep in mind, in the continental United States, we can almost always expect warmer air down in the southern part of the United States and cooler air further north towards Canada. So that means at some point there must be the separation between the warm and cool air. This frequently occurs along the stationary front that we refer to as the polar front. To understand this a little further, let's tilt the map. For various reasons, at one point or another, air may start to rise along this boundary. The rising air will produce a surface low pressure. Once we have the establishment of a surface low, replacement air will need to come in to replace where the air has risen. If there is replacement air that comes from the north, that will come in on the left side of the low pressure area, forming a cold front. If replacement air comes from the south, that will be warm air, forming a warm front on the right hand side of the low pressure area. As this continues, if there's enough strength behind the cold air, an occluded front may form. This will continue circulating, eventually trapping the warm air off the ground. As it circulates, trapped above the ground, this remnant low will gradually dissipate without a supply of warm air. Of course, there will still be warm air somewhere to the south, cool air to the north, so a new frontal boundary may develop. Let's review for that. Mid-latitude or extratropical cyclones start on a stationary front. Rising air forms a low pressure center. Replacement air will move in from the north and that will create a cold front. Replacement air coming from the south, being warm, will cause a warm front. We may see clouds and precipitation on both the warm and cold front boundaries. If there's any severe weather, it will happen if it's a fast moving cold front. Finally, we may get to the occluded front stage if the cold front catches up to a warm front. At this point, the system reaches its maximum intensity. Eventually, after the warm air source is cut off, the circulating air around the area of low pressure will dissipate. This usually happens within a day of the occlusion as the air masses circulate around each other, they blend and become uniform in temperature and moisture. That again will establish an air mass with no fronts. We may see the formation of a new stationary front boundary south of the remnant low. A mid-latitude cyclone may not clearly go through all of these steps. Sometimes they seem to skip a step or two. A few years ago, I was able to record and save this sequence of weather maps. Notice across the middle of the country, we see a stationary front. The next day, that had evolved into a cold front on the left of the system and a warm front on the right. A few days later, we see the development of the squall line and the increasing strength of the cold front. A day later, we see the beginnings of the occluded front and the remnant low over Canada. The next day, the system was beginning to cut off, and over to the west, you see the establishment of a new stationary frontal boundary. We can see these on weather maps, but we can also see them in satellite imagery. Notice the weather system in the center of the United States has a distinct comma shape. The line of clouds is associated with the cold front. These are not strange weather systems. In this photograph taken by the Apollo 17 astronauts looking back at planet Earth, we can clearly see three or maybe four mid-latitude cyclones stretched around the southern hemisphere. These cyclones produce much of the weather we see in the middle latitudes. Thanks for watching, and in the next video, we'll examine more about weather forecasting. Have a great day.